We want to honor God because He sees everything. You were born with a plan and a purpose. He's the God of all things possible. He's the God of all miracles. Grace, Grace with Nina Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I am Nina Keegan. Welcome to our broadcast today. Today we have a very exciting guest. She is a dear friend of ours. And her name is Erin Zimmerman. But Michelle, you have a wonderful intro about our dear friend. Well, she is one of the smartest people you will ever meet. And she funniest. She's amazing. She's creative. <laughs> Both sides of her brain work. She is, a, she is a writer, director, producer. She does it all at CBN. She directs their films. She recently uh, was working in Israel when the war broke out. Uh, she, the, her, her last film was The Oracles of God, the Old Testament, and when she was working on the new film, the war broke out. So I want you to give a warm welcome to our very special friend, Aaron Zimmerman. Aaron, hi. Aaron. hi. Hey, hey, Michelle, thank you for that intro. I can't possibly live up to it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's only a drop in the I'm bucket. I'm going to play that for myself when I feel bad one day. I'm just <laughs> so, Aaron, tell us what it was like. We can't even imagine. We know that you're in Israel a lot. What do you, you spend like half a year there, don't you, every year? Or it's, I do. And so what was that even like? I can't imagine when... Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. No, when, I mean, a war breaks out while you're there. Like, yes. what was October 7th like for you? Okay, well, we had just finished. I had been there all summer since July. We had just finished. We were working on a movie about the New Testament with actors and everything and sets and props. And we had just approved all that. We had spent the week before that renting a sort of a, we worked sort of a space in Tel Aviv. We tried on all the wardrobe. We tried on all the hair and the makeup. We approved every single prop. And that Friday, the day before, we had finished our last location and said, okay, this is the place. We're done. And we all went home because it was Sukkot. It was the end of the Jewish holiday of Sukkot. And that Saturday, October 7th, was Simcha Torah, which is the last day of Sukkot where they celebrate the Torah. And so we all went home and thought, we're going to have a good sleep because next week we're rolling cameras. Not so much. Wow. Saturday morning, I woke up early and I got in the habit because it's so hot there and I hate the heat. Um, I would go on that go on my walks really early, like six o'clock, six thirty. And um in Israel on Saturday, it's very the roads are very empty. The streets are empty, it's wonderful, peaceful. So I was walking down Jaffa Road, this a big sort of thoroughfare in Israel, in Jerusalem. And I had my headphones on and I'm listening to Darlene Check and she's really loud. And so I'm going along. <laughs> I hear this thing and I think there's something something wrong with this song. So I took the headphones off and sure enough, it was an air raid siren. And I thought, mm. wow, when you I lived there for four years and you, a lot of times they will test those sirens and they'll but they'll tell you about it the day before they say, you know, don't be alarmed. We're just testing. But I thought no one told me about that and mm. it's shabbat and they would never do that on shabbat so i stood there on this str empty street listening to this siren and then when the siren ended i heard the explosions you know you hear the iron dome hitting the missiles thank heaven and i thought okay this is this is for real so wow. i wow. But i kept walking because i'm an idiot <laughs> oh no I wanted to get my steps in and finish. So I thought, Oh my goodness, that's commitment, you know, Aaron. Well, do you know, every few years, Israel and Gaza has this thing where Gaza shoots some rockets, Israel bombs them. And then three days later, it's all done. Right. So I kind of figured that was that, um, I got a little further in my walk and all of my producers started calling me from Tel Aviv. And they're so, this is how sweet my crew was. They were under fire. I wasn't so much in Jerusalem, but they were all calling me because they thought, oh, this is the American. She's going to freak out and we need to check on her. I felt oh. bad. Um, and you're counting said, your steps. 
Yes, I was counting my steps. And so my producer, Sharon, was on the other line and she said, where are you? Are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm just walking on Jaffa Street. She said, you need to go home. I said, well, I'm two miles away from my home. So, you know, what's the point? And she's, and I said, it's not that bad here. And of course, when you say that, all of a sudden there's a huge explosion and she heard it on the phone and she said, you can go right now. Wow. But an goodness. interesting thing happened on the way home. It was Sim Khatora. And I don't know anyone who's been to Israel on that day will know this. What they usually do is there's a parade of Orthodox and other observant Jews and they have all these amazing outfits on with gold and white and they're just decked out. And they carry these giant Torahs through the street and they sing and they dance. And it's usually a huge parade and several huge parades in each neighborhood. And it's an amazing thing to see. And I felt so awful for these people because on the way home, there were maybe seven or eight Orthodox guys and they had brought a Torah into the street. And between air raid sirens, they would dance around with it. And the women would be on the sidelines clapping because women and men don't dance together in Orthodox Judaism. And as soon as the siren would, would go, they would run back in their shelters and they would keep doing that and come back and dance a little like wow. they were trying to salvage that observance. That and it was seem surreal to you. Yes, it was it it was weird. And I did take phone video of the sirens just because in America we're just not used to that. Maybe sometimes in the Midwest you get them for tornadoes, but yeah. Um, How yeah. did you not just freak out? Like, I, I guess, like you said, there's been these small little, oh. you know, scuffles, three day deals. But I can't imagine that, you know, you, I guess you still were thinking that, right? I mean, that it was just going to be all over in three days again. It wasn't going to be a big deal. I'll tell you why for a few reasons. Number one, I was there in the Lebanon War um, with Pat Robertson, actually, in 2006. And we were around a lot of sirens and bombs and all that stuff. So it didn't really, it sounds weird to say it didn't bother me, but I was used to it. Number two, they don't usually never hit Jerusalem. Jerusalem, as it turned out, was the safest place in the country this time around. And it usually is because they won't bomb Jerusalem because the Muslims consider it their city. So they don't want to ruin any of their holy sites. Um, and number three, I honestly believe God has your days and times marked, mm -hmm. you know, if, if he wants me to stay on this planet, nobody can take me off of it. Amen. If he wants me, off, nobody can stop that either. So either way, I'm fine. Oh, that's awesome. That's risk. But you know, it just keeps you from fear if you think that. Yeah, that's good. So um, when did you make a decision that you were going to leave? You, you know, we're going to, we're going to take a quick break, Aaron, but I want you mm -hmm. to answer that when you come back, like, because sure. then, you know, how long was it for you to get out and, and what was that like? So we'll talk about that in a minute when we come back. Stay right All there. Right. You are watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, and we will be right back. I'm excited to announce that we're bringing back our best offer ever on our original My Slippers. You save $90 a pair with your promo code. And now My Slippers come in even more sizes smaller sizes, larger sizes, wide sizes, and all new styles and colors. Get them for your friends, your family, your neighbors, everyone you know. What makes My Slippers different is my exclusive four layer design that you're not going to find in any other slippers. My Slippers patented layers make them ultra comfortable, extremely durable, and they help relieve stress on your feet. I'm so confident that you and everyone you know are going to love My Slippers that I'm extending my 60 day money back guarantee until March 1st, 2024, making them the best Christmas gifts ever. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen now. Use your promo code to save $90. That's only $49.98 a pair. Quantities won't last long, so please order now. Welcome back. You are watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, and we are talking to Erin Zimmerman. And she was in Israel, if you've been watching, during October 7th, during the, the war, when the war started, the raid and the bombing. So, Erin, what happened after that? Like, when did you decide that this is more than a three day deal and I need to get out of here? Well, I think later in the day is when we started hearing about the massacres down south in the Kibbutzim and on the, the kidnappings on the military base. And then we all agreed by the end of the day, this is not the normal thing. This is a horror. 
Wow. And it was sort of, it reminded me of 9-11, where mm. it's all happening so fast and you don't know what's going to happen next. Is it going to the Capitol? Is it going to the White House? That's sort of where we were on that Saturday. Um, and our biggest fear in Jerusalem, honestly, was we had been told, um, I was with sort of our CBN News Bureau in Jerusalem, because I didn't want to stay home in my apartment and just listen to sirens. So I went to the News Bureau. And we were told that men, that Muslim men had been encouraged in every city to go through the cities and slaughter. And Jerusalem wow. is surrounded by the West Bank on three sides. And Jerusalem is 40% Arab. So, and they had just had their holy services the day before on Friday. So when they go up to the mosque, this is what they're being told by the imams. And so that was really our biggest fear, not so much the rockets, but are they going to come through Jerusalem and just go bananas again? Mm -hmm. And I actually, for the first time in my life, I did look around my rental apartment and say, is there any place I could hide here? You know, wow. I, you have those thoughts after you hear what went on down south. Um, but I talked with my producer and we said, OK, let's let's wait a week because maybe this will be wrapped up in a few days, maybe not. And about three days in, she called me and she said, just get a ticket, get a ticket so you'll have one. Either way, you can you can cancel it, you, whatever, just get one. And she was right. I mean, thank heaven for her, because when I sat down to get a ticket that day, United, which is what I usually fly in, United canceled, every American airline, every European airline canceled. The only airlines that were really running were El Al and some Arab airlines. Um, and it, so from that point, it took me, once I got on El Al, their tickets were going two weeks out. Wow. So I stayed for about two and a half weeks. Um, and of course, my mother was home going, calling me just saying, get on one of those boats to Cyprus. I said, Mom, I'm not going to stand out on a dock all day to see if I can get on a boat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> they did. They would be up in Haifa. You stand on a dock for 12 hours and maybe you get on the boat and then they dump you in Cyprus. So um, how did you finally get out? Uh, El Al. I just, yeah. God gave me peace. I got that ticket. I watched their flight board and God bless the people of El Al. They were, they made every flight. They were flying in and out. They doubled their flights actually, because they knew they had to bring Israeli soldiers home to fight that were abroad. And then they had to get people out as well. So I just, you know, I got that ticket and uh, God gave me peace and he really gave me some things to do in the Jerusalem Bureau. I went and helped them write news stories or do whatever. Because they were very, very overtaxed. Well, they were the hub at that time because they're a trusted news source, one mm. of the most trusted, mm -hmm. and everybody wanted to talk to Chris Mitchell and the gang, you know, at, at, at CBN Israel. And I tell you, that was one of the, this is going to sound strange, but that was a really wonderful two weeks of my life. And I hate to say that knowing what my friends were going through. But I loved every second with that bureau. I, I was, got to see some amazing things. We had a girl come in and talk about her sister who was kidnapped, which was awful. Her sister was a soldier. And this this girl was just going to every news outlet she could and saying, here's my sister's picture, put it up, you know. And then right after that, a former Hezbollah fighter came in to be interviewed and he, he had seen Jesus. He had seen a vision of Jesus wow. and got saved. Yeah, it was incredible. But we didn't know that about him. We just knew he was former Hezbollah. So we thought it would be cool to talk about him right now. It's very newsworthy. So he was in our control room watching this girl's story, he and his wife, and they were just weeping, weeping, weeping. Wow. And some of the people in the bureau, thank heaven, were running their cell phones. I wasn't because I was just caught up in talking to them. And this girl came out of the studio and he wanted to talk to her. And he said, I apologize on behalf of my people for what you're going through. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. And she said, I forgive you. And they talked and they exchanged information. And he said, you know, I want to invite, I live in Germany. I want to invite you and your sister to come, to come eat with us at our house, come visit us. She said, I'll come, I'll come when I can bring my sister. So then he gets into the studio and we think he's just going to talk about Hezbollah and he starts telling his testimony of God, Jesus coming to him in a prison cell. Wow. And to see that combination of things on the same day, to see him and her together, to see an Arab apologizing to an Israeli. I mean, it was truly amazing. So I, those, those two weeks for me were a gift. Wow. Well, see what the devil meant for harm. You know, God had you in there, you know, using, yeah. you, you know, and, and then just to, you know, people need to hear that. I mean, I know that, 
you know, there's so much going on here, whether, you know, we're supposed to, you know, help the innocent people of Gaza, there, you know, but look what's happened to Israel. And there's so many pro Hamas things happening in the United States. And it's, it's, yeah. it's terrifying, ter you know, it's terrifying to see all of that. And so, you know, then you can see what, what can happen when you, you know, when you see Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. and yes. So when you were getting out, were you scared? I mean, you know, here on the news, they were talking about the threats on the airport in Tel Aviv. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're, I mean, that had to be in and of itself terrifying. But then again, you already said, you know, your last day on earth, you know, if that's what God has, you know, so, but I, I can't imagine, you know, going up in the, in the flight right there. I actually wasn't scared. I, I would have, if we could listen, if we could have found a way to keep a crew of a hundred people safe and do that movie, I would have stayed there and done it. But um, because we were working, <laughs> no, I, I really would have because these people, my crew had worked so hard on it. Um, and we had, but we had so many male, you know, being the story of Jesus and the apostles, we had so many male crew, crew members and cast members. And of course, many of them got called up. And we made a decision, look, we just can't keep everybody safe. But I, I wasn't scared of leaving, but I felt sad to leave. I actually cried a little bit on the flight out, wow. which is unusual for me. Um, because I thought on one hand, I'm getting out and I'm going to go spend a night in London, which I love, and then go home to America. So for me, it's good. I But I really carry the weight of um, what my friends over there are going through. Yeah. Because right after it happened, they all went to work volunteering just immediately. Wow. So they basically went to help with the war and you felt some type of guilt because you were going home. Is that is that kind of how it was? A, li a little bit. I mean, guilt, maybe not guilt, because I know God orders everything. And, you know, I'm not Israeli, so it, it's right. not my home. And but but more sorrow for them because they were really traumatized. I'll tell you, I have my producer's the strongest woman I know. I mean, she is she's the Iron Maiden. I'll tell you. On my behalf, she she wow. is tough, and she was really traumatized by it. And I I could tell whenever Sharon calls me, I know I'm in for an hour long phone call. She'll talk about movies, she'll talk about art, she'll talk about books, and then we'll talk about what we need to. But she was after this, she was calling me, saying what she needed to say, getting off. And I knew they were all very traumatized, and that for me, I couldn't do anything to help it, but it it felt bad to leave, you know, I wanted well, to. Oh, I'm sure it did. Well, we're going to come back in just a minute. And I'd like to talk to you about the media coverage versus what you're actually hearing. I'm excited to announce that we're having our biggest Christmas sale ever. You get our brand new six piece My Towels for only $29.98 or rejuvenate your bed with a MyPillow mattress topper as low as $99.99. Or how about my pillow bed sheets for as low as $24.98? There's something for everyone. Duvets, quilts, down comforters, body pillows, bolster pillows, and so much more. Well, I know my pillow products make for the perfect Christmas gifts, so I'm going to extend my money back guarantee until March 1st, 2024. So go to mypillow.com now or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get huge discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you get our six piece towels for only $29.98, or get your very own my pillow bed sheets for as low as $24.98. It's our biggest Christmas sale ever. Get all your shopping done now while quantities last. Welcome back to Grace Grace with Nina Michelle. We are with Aaron Zimmerman, CBN extraordinaire, and we are talking about what happened on October 7th. She was making uh, a documentary, The Oracles of God, The New Testament, and everything was interrupted. And Aaron, uh, we're so sorry you had to go through that, that your plans were interrupted. And we also want to talk to you about, you are in close contact with people who were inside of Israel, and then you watch the news. Tell mm -hmm. us the difference in the coverage. Oh, it's incredible. And I could tell from the things that, that even just my mother was saying to me, she would call me and say, well, a bunch of rockets were in Jerusalem and it, there were explosions and everything. And I said, mother, I'm in Jerusalem. Nothing happened. And then I'd look at the, the American headlines were so overblown. Dozens of rockets fired at Jerusalem makes it sound like the city was destroyed when really they didn't even get to the outskirts. They were 
destroyed 20 miles outside Jerusalem. Wow. So even the, the exaggeration, but honestly, the, the I'm sick to death. I mean, I'm sick to my stomach with this coverage of Israel being the genocidal country, yes. Israel being the apartheid state. Israel is the only country I know that takes such care to the people who are attacking it. I mean, they, they evacuated, they helped with the evacuation of their enemies. Hamas wouldn't help. Hamas blocked the evacuation. They helped evacuate their enemies. They provided a safe corridor for them to go south. They drop notes from the air. They call you, they text you and say, get out, go this place because we're going to bomb. I've never seen a country do that. And Hamas certainly did not give anyone warning when they came and butchered 1,400 people in Israel. Um, it's outrageous. Nobody is talking about that. And if you want to talk about genocide and ethnic cleansing, oh, I hear that term. Don't you hear that term all the time? Israel's ethnically cleansing the Palestinians. Well, in 1948, there were 800,000 Palestinians in Gaza. Today, there are 2 million. Mm. That wow. doesn't sound like if you're ethnically cleansing someone, it means that they go away and exactly. they disappear. They don't multiply. Exactly. But don't you think that TikTok and other social media, it, they're radicalizing Take our news. youth? Oh, yeah. it's awful. Yeah, it's awful. Especially our youth right now, that yes. they are believing and, these lies. And you see the influences. I've seen, I don't know if you've seen them, these these sort of conservative reporters that for fun go in these crowds and they say, hey, yeah, from the river to the sea, yeah, and the, and they'll oh, talk to some businesses, uh, yeah, from the river to the sea, and then he'll say to them, what river? Yeah. And they will go, what? What river are they talking about? I don't know. What sea are they talking about? I don't know. So they're just following everything that they've been taught. And we're tracing, I think somebody in CBN News is actually doing a story on this. We're tracing the origins of this BDS movement, this boycott, divest, and sanction Israel. Every root of it goes back to Hamas and goes back to other terror groups in Israel and the Palestinian Authority. So then you go, okay, terrorists are funding this and our young people are, and they're making it, they're making it palatable for mm -hmm. American Westerners. And oh, from the river to the sea, doesn't that sound like a pretty poem? And oh, the poor Palestinians, they're just rising up like, like the Americans did in the American Revolution. You know, it's a just cause and they need their freedom. And I'm sad it's, to say it's really effective. It, I hate it. It's shocking, it. though, really. I mean, don't yeah. you think? Because if you think about it, you know, why? It, it, it is It is what, if you think about when it, when the Bible says whatever good is evil and whatever evil is good, and that, the fact that these college kids and all these things are, are, are just, they're spewing these things, they're having these rallies, they're, all of these things are, are, are just, it's unbelievable to me. Well, it's demonic. That it's even allowed. It is. Yeah, that it's it, demonic. That these people. You just hit the nail on the head, Michelle. It, there's no, there's mm -hmm. so little logic because this is what I say. Okay. If you want to take the, the main causes of the left, Israel is the greenest, one of the greenest countries on the planet. They plant more trees. They recycle everything. My goodness, they recycle their wastewater for heaven's sake. Um, they're green. You know, Tel Aviv is considered the gay capital of the Middle East. Um, they had a woman prime minister 50, 60 years ago, be way before we've had a woman president. So they have every value that the left should run to. And the Palestinians and Islam have all the values that that don't jive with the left here. They don't women don't have rights. Gay people will be murdered. It's yeah, not just that they disagree. They'll be executed. So I do not understand why the left is embracing one over the other. It's the just only the thing devil. It's is kicking. what you said. It is mm -hmm. demonic. It, mm -hmm. These are the children of God. This is God's chosen people. And generation after generation, all the way back to the Bible, you see it. It makes no sense. But, you know, the, enemies, the enemy does his thing. Aaron, we're getting close to the end of the time already. I just could wow. talk to you forever I, uh, about uh, things. And so, so we would just love to have you pray for our viewers. And then if you want to tell them what you're working on now. Yeah, sure. and pray for Israel. Pray first or talk first? Either way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, just very quickly, it, this is a lesson. If God disrupts your plans, don't be too disappointed. He has a purpose for it. He disrupted one film to give me another one. Uh, right now we're working on a documentary about the amazing 
amazing volunteerism that's going on in Israel right now. And it'll be called The Genius of Israel. Uh, it's based on a beautiful new book by Dan Senor, and I encourage you to read it. It's just gorgeous. It is also called The Genius of Israel. Um, so we'll highlight that and highlight this time in history when the whole country is drawing together and just serving one another. Um, and all the proceeds from this film will go to help people in Israel, the displaced families and the IDF as well. So let's Amen. pray. Okay, let's do it. Lord, as we're getting close to the holidays, um, I pray for all the people out there who are lonely. I pray for the people for whom the holiday is a really hard time, Lord. I pray for the people who are alone, who have had loved ones pass away recently, Lord, who are struggling financially, who are struggling with their health. Lord Jesus, would you give them comfort yes. and joy, yeah. just like the Christmas song says, comfort and joy, Lord Jesus. Would you be with them? Would you provide them with people that they need? Would you provide them with the community, Lord? Would, would you meet their needs in Jesus' name? Give them joy this Christmas, Lord. Let this yes. not be a season of mourning. I just feel it very strongly because... I know a lot of people are celebrating, but boy, I know that there are a lot of people who aren't, and I, I feel for you. And Lord, just be with them in Jesus' name. Be with them. Anybody who's struggling, Lord, Amen. healing and hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Aaron, so much. We're just so grateful to have you on. We pray that you have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year and give our love to everyone at CBN. You know, we love everybody over there. Absolutely, so. I will. Thank you. Yeah, it's love awesome. you, Aaron. You. God Bye. bless you. Love Bye. you. Bye. Does science disprove God? Is there a war between science and faith? We don't need God to create a universe. There's no evidence for God and it's irrational. Is there no evidence for God? Am I delusional for my beliefs? It is delusional and stupid. Am I brainwashed? Do I ignore reason? Logic. Critical thinking. Science. RDOF uses logic and reasoning. RDOF has empowered my sons to defend their faith with facts. If you want to be equipped to defend against the biggest objections to the existence of God, RDOF is the place for you. Has science really ruled out God? Is faith at war with science? If you want to be equipped to respond to these claims and more, check out RDOF.org. The evidence he presents is so powerful and overwhelming. Incredibly compelling, yet easily understandable. We believe in rationality, we believe in reason, we believe in science, and we believe in the existence of God. I would leave every event with a mind-boggling awe and assurance. I never believed in God. I just think it was craziness. RDOF confirmed my faith. RDOF confirmed my uh, full belief, full faith in the Lord, man. The appearance of design in the universe is undeniable. The lights, the crowd, the videos. To book a presentation or watch our free videos, go to rdof.org or find us on Facebook at RDOF Events.